Hi, my name is Jeff Probst. This is my wife, Janet, and our daughter, Allie. Allie was diagnosed with Rett syndrome at 14. She resides here at Mill Creek Campus in the Dreyer home at Markland. She likes to be out and about. She likes to go places. Um, people recognize her everywhere we take her. Yep. She's got a, you know, very loving personality. She's quiet. She doesn't get upset for the most part about too many things. My name is Kelly. This is my son, Kevin, and my daughter, Carly, and my daughter, Candace, who's 28 years old. Candace was diagnosed with Rett syndrome at the age of uh, 15, and she is living in the Markland Dreyer home. Candace is the strongest person that I know. She's determined, social, happy, and beautiful. We're the Braschka family. I'm John, my wife Valerie, and our daughter Katie. She's 19 years old and she's diagnosed with Rett syndrome at age three. She now lives at Markland in Sayers' home. Katie is a really sociable, smiley person who just makes us joyful. She brings a lot of happiness to our lives. She loves music. She loves kind of her alone time in her room. And she also likes to hang out with people too. She loves her family and friends and um, enjoys going to school. I'm Kay Borchard and this is my husband, Mike. Um, we're here with uh, Michelle, who is our middle daughter. She's 32 years old and she lives at Richard Home at Markland. Shelly's a very engaging young woman. She likes to laugh. Um, she likes to go swimming. She loves to eat, especially if she's going out to the restaurants. Rett syndrome is in the category of rare diseases. It uh, is a neurodevelopmental condition. Uh, it's very rare. It uh, affects mainly females. And 99% of the time, it is caused by a random genetic mutation. It pretty much robs them of most all of their skills. Um, say, for, for example, for Michelle, she was born normal. She started developing normal. She just lost a lot of those skills. She had three words, she lost them. Um, she lost that ability to crawl. She lost that ability to go upstairs. She now no longer can walk by herself. Um, she's nonverbal. She is not toilet trained. Um, so it leaves them, in, in most cases, at that severe and profound level. You know, uh, when your worst fears are realized, and you know that you've got a child that's never going to be quite what you'd hoped. You know, the profound sadness, the sense of responsibility that we have something to do with this. What could we have done differently? Um, but you know, uh, as a parent, I mean, it kind of kicks in and the, you want to make sure that they are protected and that they're as happy as they can be and that they're provided for. So we just, but we were going to keep her at home until we were old. We no. were just, there was no intentions of ever wanting to ever anywhere but with us. John and I had always said that Katie would live in our home for as long as we were able to take care of her. And we really felt that that was to be the case. It was our goal to keep Candace at home with us as long as we possibly could, you know, until I couldn't physically take care of her anymore. So when Markland came along, it was life-changing, I think, for all of us. I think it takes a lot of courage for a family to say, to come to Markland and say, we just can't do this anymore. Markland is an amazing place. Um, I can't imagine what these parents go through, but having a place like this where these kids can come and they have family 
and they have people who love them and they have a home. It's where they come back to after school. It's where they come, they get up in the morning. It's Saturday morning cartoons. It's, it's home. Um, their kitchen is just like every other kitchen. It's busy at nighttime. Um, they're just, it's a home. They love being there. We love having them. Um, Markland is a family. When we found Markland, it was just, it was like kind of an epiphany. It's like this is the place that you want to put your child, you know. Um, they just do a terrific job with this population. It was a tough decision, the hardest one I've ever made or ever will make. And there are days where you feel like your heart is just gone. And if it wasn't for Markland and, and the care that she gets, I don't think that I would be able to live day to day knowing that, you know, she wasn't with me. She has an entire team of loving and caring individuals. Uh, she has aides that get her up in the morning, dress her, feed her breakfast, and then she gets to go to DT where she has friends and social interaction that we could never provide for her here in our home. Uh, then she comes back to Sarah's home in the afternoon and she's able to relax, have dinner with her housemates. Markland has a mission of making everyday life possible for individuals with profound disabilities. Um, we provide, obviously, everyday care, um, you know, helping them eat and get bathed and everything, but it goes beyond that. It's, um, you know, bowling and reading and going to the movies and um, reading books and a curriculum and stuff that maybe we would take for granted that without Markland, maybe they wouldn't get to experience. And it's been remarkable to see Candace's change and the way she loves the staff at Markland and, and the way that they love her. It is so much easier on me and knowing that I'm comfortable with that decision. And um, it's been life changing. Every time I walk in the door, I see the love. I see the people that care for Allie and don't just work here. They love her, you know, and um, they're so attentive. So they're just net workers that we see now and then when we walk in the door, we, we get to know them and they become almost part of our family as well. They trust us with their most prized possession. And I guess my job is the best, the best thing I can do is to take that frustration away as much as I can. I can't take it away 100%. I never could, but every bit that I can do to help that frustration is what I'm here for. And make this as homey as possible. Make it their, their place, this is their home. And Make sure the parents know that. Being able to trust Markland and know that she's being taken care of allows us to actually live a life. It's the security. It's the security of knowing uh, that when we pass, okay, that someone's really going to be looking after. And it's really not our children's responsibility, it's our responsibility, you know, and passing the baton to Markland.